First Kings chapter 7. But Solomon was building his own house 13 years. I run back to 638 at the end of the verse. So was he seven years in building it. Seven years to build the temple and 13 years to build his own house. Kind of interesting. He built also the house of the forest of Lebanon. The length thereof was 100 cubits. The breadth thereof 50 cubits. And the height thereof 30 cubits. Upon four rows of cedar pillars, with cedar beams upon the pillars. I mean, these places are just absolutely wonderful. Cedar, gold, pillars, beams. And it was covered with cedar, cedar above upon the beams that laid on the 45 pillars, 15 in a row. So there are three rows of pillars. And instead of overlaying with gold as he did with the temple, he overlaid, overlaid this house in, in the forest level with cedar. Cedar is a pretty wood when you cut it up. And it smells good. And it was covered with cedar above the beams and laid on 45 pillars, 15 in a row. And there were windows in three rows. And light was against light in three ranks. So I would assume that across from each way there was a window and it's hard to put. But um, ranks is the first time that word is used there. Ranks. I can tell you that much. And all the doors and posts were square. That's the first time that word shows up. Uh, and square doesn't mean four equal size. It means they were square. They were 45 degree angles. With the windows. And light was against light in three ranks. So something about those windows that they're, they're mentioned again. A verily, verily. It's important. He made a porch of pillars. So there's also now a porch of pillars. There's a house. And there's a porch. Solomon seems to like these, these porches. And porches are great. I mean when it's hot or that. You go out and sit on them. The length was 50 cubits. The breadth thereof. 30 cubits, and the porch was before them in the front, and other pillars and thick beams were before them. A thick beam. One individual beam went across this pillar. Then he made a porch for the throne where he might judge. So here's another porch. And on this porch was a throne of judgment. Even the porch of judgment. And it was covered with cedar from one side of the floor to the other. And this would have been open, I would assume, being a porch. And somewhere, I don't know if in the center, I would assume in the center, here's his throne. And if you were called to this porch, you're being judged. And his house, where he dwelt, this is his own house, had a court within the porch. So here's another porch. In that porch, he had a court, and you ever been in buildings, in the middle of the building, there's a courtyard. You have trees and picnic tables and stuff like that. Well, that's what he had, which was of the light work. And you see something like this, and I just realized Esther. Go to Esther real quick. Uh, I can find it. Okay, Esther chapter 7, verse 7. And this may be a type, but here they're at the banquet hall where they dine. And 7 7, and the king, arising from the banquet of wine in his wrath, went unto the palace garden. So here is a table laid out, a feasting area, and not far from that is a, is a garden. And just to show off the wealth of the king, here, here's my house. Look at the beautiful courtyard I have. Look at the beautiful porch. And he would, the porch would be facing probably that greenery that to sit out there and watch. Maybe a bird feeder or a sundial. And back in verse 8, first Kings, in the house where he dwelt had another court within the porch. So inside the porch there was a court. 
which was of the like work. Solomon made also an house for Pharaoh's daughter. He makes another house for her. She's not living with him. He builds her a house whom he had taken to wife like unto this porch. Uh, they had a courtyard. All these were of costly stones, according to the measures of hewed stones. Sawed. That's the only place that word shows up. Sawed. With saws. So the stones were cut by man. Within and without. Even from the foundations onto the coping. That's the first that's the only time that word shows up. And so on, the outside toward the great court. So, you got beautiful cedars, which probably cost much money. And you got these beautiful stones. They're costly stones. They're cut. They're broad. They build. And I don't think you can find any of them today. They were so destroyed by the Babylonians. Because of sin. And the foundation was of costly stones and great stones. Stones of ten cubits, the stones of eight cubits, large stones. And above were costly stones after the measure of huge stones and cedar. So here's the foundation of big stone. On top of that foundation, stones and wood. And a great court roundabout was with three rows of huge stones and a row of cedar beams, both for the inner court of the house of the Lord and for the porch of the house. So we're back at the it's a great court, and that's where the uh, the brazen altar would be. That's where the uh, the labor would be. We're in that courtyard again. We've already looked at the house. We've already looked at the oracle. Now we're going outside. And King Solomon sent and fetched Hiram out of Tyre. He was a widow's son of the tribe of Naphtali, Jewish. And his father was a man of Tyre. That's a Gentile city on the coast, on the Mediterranean coast. A worker in brass, almost like Cain's family. And he was filled with wisdom and understanding and cunning to work all works of brass. Where's the knowledge? There's no knowledge mentioned. And he came to King Solomon and brought all his work. Now 15 to 22, we're going to look at the pillars. These two big pillars in their name. For he cast two pillars of brass. Of 18 cubits high a piece. A line of 12 cubits that compass either of them but. So they're round. I, I don't know if this is a circumference. It's not the radius. Radius. You take a tape measure. You go around the circumference of these columns. And going around them. The measurement would be 12 cubits. He made two chapters. And this would be like a cap. On top of it, of molten brass to set upon the tops of the pillars. The height of one chapter, that's the first time that word shows up, was five cubits. So you got uh, 18 cubits high plus five cubits for the chapter, 23 cubits high together. They were huge. And the height of the other chapter was five cubits. So they're both the same. These two pillars are identical. And nets. That's the first time that word shows up. You think nets would be fishing. Of checker. That's the only time that word shows up. Checker work. So what is these nets of checker work? Looks like a, che looks like a checkerboard. Little squares like a fishing net and they would hang down off of these pillars and with that a re and reeves first time that word shows up <laughs> interesting reeves of chain work so here are reeves made of chains here's a network of checker work and they're just decorations and ornaments upon these two pillars for the chapters which were on the top of the pillars. Seven for the one chapter. And seven for the other chapter. Again that's the cap. That sits on top of the pillars. And he made the pillars. 
the pillars. These two pillars, as I make my notes here, see how much you read in this. He made the pillars and two rows upon two rows about upon the one network to cover the chapters that were on top. All right, here's what the coverings were: pomegranates. That's interesting. It's proof. Pomegranates. Pomegranates go back to Rachel and Leah. One of Leah's boys find pomegranates out in the field. Rachel said, hey, I want your pomegranates. Uh, Mandrake? Okay. Well, pomegranates today are very popular. And also above, over against the belly, which was by the network. Now, that's a funny word, belly. What is going on here? I don't know. <laughs> Some kind of decorations upon the chapters and the pillars. And they look like pomegranates. There's a network. There's a wreath. Huh? Belly. belly. Verse 20. Over against the belly. Right, your Bible don't have that? Yeah. Okay. I don't know what's on the Bible. Which was by the network. I don't know what the belly has anything to do there. That's weird. And the pomegranates were 200 in rows round about the other chapter. So whatever. The pomegranates, 200 upon the chapter. And he sat upon the pillars in the porch of the temple. Now this would be as you enter, as you go in, the porch. And sit up the right pillar and call the name of Jack. He shall establish what Jackson means. And you can find that name in the Bible, Jackson. He set up the left pillar and called the name thereof Boaz in its strength. Now, one thing with Boaz, that's his great, great, great grandfather. That's the one in the book of Ruth. So he named one of his pillars after his great, great grandfather. And upon the top of the pillars was Lily work. That's the first time Lily shows up. Yeah, Lily showed up in verse 19. Really? Oh, look at that. Wow. One night okay, Lily shows up in 19. So was the work of the pillars finished. Glad you don't follow me, people. Follow the Bible. All right, now verse 23. We're going to look at the molten sea. This is where the priest would watch. When you come into the, the courtyard, you would see the brazen altar. That's where the sacrifices, that's where the animals were burned. The next thing you would do as you're heading to the house would be this big thing of water. And it's called a labor. And the priest would wash you. And then you would go to the veil and enter the holy place. And you would go into the most holy place. But about this molten sea. And he made a molten sea. Ten cubits. From the one brim to the other. This thing is round. I believe this is circumference. But when it, from one round to the other round. Straight across. Is ten cubits. It was round all about. And its height was five cubits. And a line of 30 cubits that compassed it round about. Again, if you take a, a measuring rod, go around the circumference. And then pull off that line and measure it. It's 30 cubits. And under the brim, the edge of the, the bowl, of it round about were knops. That's a, that's a design. You find knops on the candlestick. Compassing, that's the first time that word shows up. And there's one other, one other place that shows up is 2 Chronicles 4.2. It compassed it. So the knops went all the way around. Ten in a cubit. Compassing. That's interesting. Because it's the only other place. And there it is again. Compassing. The sea around about. So I guess the website I'm using for these is not very accurate. The knobs were cast in two rows. So there's two rows of knobs. 
when it was cast. So, in the bowl, in the molten sea, there are in that, put in the, uh, what do you call it? The form. In that form is cut these knots. So when they poured in the brass, the design is in the bowl. When it was cast, it stood upon 12 oxen. Three looking to the north, three looking to the west, three looking toward the south, and three looking toward the east. And the sea was a set above upon them. And all their hinder parts, their rear ends, were inward. So here are 12 lions, or oxen, excuse me, messing up today. There are 12 oxen, three all different directions, and on their back. They're carrying a burden. And that burden is this big bowl that's going to hold the water for the priest to do the washing. And the, in the New Testament, Paul likens oxen to preachers. Their burden is the people. By washing of the word, the Bible says. Solomon has a thing for, for the animals. He, he'll have lions by his throne he's got oxen carrying it now this wasn't in moses design but when he builds that brazen he does it new that brazen labor he he designs it and he puts four sides of that east north south and west three animals the oxen on each side and it was a hand breath thick so the bowl that went around, the thickness of that bowl was a hand breath. And the brim thereof was wrought like the brim of a cup. It looks like a cup. With flowers of lilies. That's the first time lilies shows up. And I would assume that it being open lilies, like, like a, probably if you look down on it, it may, maybe look like a big lily. Open. It contained, for the first time that word shows up, 2,000 baths. That's the first time that word shows up. Now that doesn't mean 2,000 bathtubs. Bath is a measure, measurement of volume of water, and they say it's about 8 gallons. One bath is about 8 gallons. So you figure that out, it'd be about 16,000 gallons of water. That's a lot of water. Roughly. Don't trust my mouth. He made ten bases. That's the first time that word shows up. A brass. Brass is judgment. Brass is outside the house of the Lord. It's out in the courtyard. That's where you're judged. That's where you come to that brazen altar. That's where you bring your sin off. That's where, hey, I committed this sin. This is my sacrifice. Hey, I committed this sin. This is where I got to be washed. Four cubits was the length of one base, and four cubits the breadth thereof, and three cubits the height thereof. And the work of the bases was on this manner. They had borders, and the borders were between the ledges. That's the first time that word shows up. And on the borders were between the ledges were lions, oxen, and cherubim. Well, John and Ezekiel tell us what those cherubims look like. The Bible says cherubim. So, the daily $10,000 question you would have is, what three men knew what cherubims looked like? You have to say Solomon, Ezekiel, and John. And I guarantee you that Solomon would not have little puffy babies with wings, hold, you know, holding their heads up. Because that's not what a biblical cherubim is. Now the question is. John and Ezekiel tell us they have four faces. Ox. Lion, ox, lion, man, and eagle. Well he's already got lions and oxen here. 
cherubim face of a man? Not a baby, a man, the Bible says. And maybe an eagle. And upon the ledges there was a base above, and beneath the lions and oxen were certain additions, the first time that word shows up, made of thin work, so it's very thin. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on in 29. Besides, there's lions, oxen, and cherubims in some kind of shell. And every base had four brazen wheels and plates of brass. And the four corners thereof had undersetters under the labor. Right, under the labor were undersetters. There's only three times that word shows up. Twice here and once in 30. Uh, 34. Molten. Undersetters is something under something. At the side of every addition. That's the only place that word shows up. You got additions and you got addition. Again, I'm, I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea what the building construction here is. But we're going to look at something that's going to be like a wagon coming up. That, I can, some kind of wagon. And the mouth of it within the chapter and above was a cubit. But the mouth thereof was round after the work of the base, a cubic and a half. And also upon the mouth of it were gravings, only time that word shows up, with their borders, four square, not round. They're not round. That's the only thing I can tell you. Sorry. And under the borders were four wheels. So this thing is portable. This thing can move around. So when one king says to the priest, go over here and copy this altar, this great altar. And the priest comes and builds that altar and he moves this thing out of the way so he can put his altar. Moves everything around. And under the boards were four wheels and an axle and the axle trees. That's the first time that shows up. And it's the shaft or axle of these wheels. And that word is used for the wagons as the wagons that went west. Of the wheels were joined to the base. Do you remember what Ezekiel described when he described the cherubim? They had wheels. How far is Solomon going to what Ezekiel saw? You say, "What's the?" End? I have no idea. We don't. We don't. We don't see this. But you see the cherubims. John Ezekiel tells the four faces and wings and describes them. Ezekiel gives us what more idea of wheels, and to back it up, Solomon long before Ezekiel is ever even thought of by his parents, and long before his parents are even thought of. Solomon is talking about these cherubims, and here are wheels again. And it's interesting. What cherubim did he have? There are four of them. And wheels. With Ezekiel 1. The work of the wheels was like the work of... Oh, no, I'm going to die. Axel, verse 32. And the axle trees of the wheels were joined to the base, and the height of a wheel was a cubic and half a cubic, so a cubic and a half. And the work of the wheels was like the work of a chariot wheel. And that's a wheel with wooden spokes. Their axle trees, again the axle, and their nades. Now a nade, when you look at a wheel, and you look at the inner hub where the axle attaches to, and they're, oh, this is all, fellows. The naves is the center of the wheel. It's a big, thick piece. The fellows is the outer rim inside. And between the naves and the fellows is the spokes. So there are spokes connecting. And their spokes were all molten. They were brass. 
meadow. And there were four under settlers to the four corners of one base, and the under were of very were of the very base itself. Again, I don't have a clue. In the top of the base was round was there a round compass, round circle, of half a cubit high. And on the top of the base, the ledges thereof and the borders thereof were of the same. Good, I don't know. On the plates of the ledges thereof and on the borders thereof, he graved cherubims, lions, and palm trees. <laughs> that palm tree shows up much. It shows up in the holy, most holy place. Palm trees are trees that can withstand storms. They stand up straight. They don't offer much shade. According to the proportion of every one and additions round about. So here's lions and cherubims. I, I gotta ask which one? What's the lion? The lion of the tribe of Judah. That's prophecy. After this manner he made the ten bases, and all of them had one casting. So in other words, casting is the mold you make. That's the word I wanted before. That's the mold you make, and you would pour the liquid brass in there and let it dry. Then you break away the, the casing, and then you got what you pour. One measure and one size. Then made he ten labors. First time that word shows up. A brass. Everything's brass. Judgment. One labor. Now a labor is a vessel that's used for washing. I would think it'd be almost like a faucet. Every labor was four cubits, and upon every one of the ten braces, one labor. You could open it, get the water, and do what you need to do. Watch yourself, watch whatever you're doing. He put five bases on the right side of the house and five on the left side of the house and set the sea on the right side of the house eastward toward, uh, eastward over against the south. So even this, this brazen laver is a little more off center than Moses. Moses had the brazen altar, the brazen laver, and then the tabernacle. All right, new chapter. And Hiram made the labors and the shovels and the basins. So Hiram made an end of doing all the work that he made King Solomon for the house of the Lord. Now Hiram's done all this work, but notice how the charge goes to Solomon. Solomon has ordered it. Solomon is paying for it. Solomon's in control of it. Solomon gets the credit. Now you remember Joab's brother gets the credit for killing uh, uh, Abner. He didn't do it, but he was thinking about it. Solomon, I don't think he's lifting a hammer. I don't think he's lifting a nail. And yet, he is providing everything. He's making sure he's got the blueprint. He's setting the men into the courses to do all it is. And the Lord is crediting him by the work. The two pillars and the two bowls of the chapters that were on the top of the two pillars, and the two networks to cover the two bowls of the chapters, which were on the top of the pillars. That's, that's more information than we know about Jesus from three years old to 13 years old. 400 pomegranates for the two networks. And you thought networks was computer. Even two rows of pomegranates for one network to cover the two bowls of the chapters that were upon the pillars. And the ten bases, the ten labors on the bases, one sea, twelve oxen under the sea, the pots, the shovels, the basins, and all these vessels, which Hiram made to King Solomon for the house of the Lord, were of bright brass. Can you imagine this stuff when the sun shined on it? Can you imagine when the sun shined on that gold, it shined on that brass. Man, you probably had to rub your eyes. I bet you this city was seen miles and miles away. It's on a hill. I mean, it's on a mountain. 
Jesus said a, a light that's on a hill cannot be hid. I bet you this city could not have been hid. In the plain of Jordan, that's, that's the area of Jordan, did the king cast them. In the clay, it's the first time clay shows up, clay ground between Succoth and Zarthan. And what they did was they took clay and they made those forms. Whatever was to be made, the, the labor, the bowls, the shovel, they would make the mold out of the clay and they would put the molten uh, brass in there. And Solomon left all the vessels unweighted. There's no way to measure it. Because they were exceedingly many. Neither was the weight of the brass found out. There's no, there was so much brass. And Solomon made all the vessels that pertain unto the house of the Lord. The altar of gold. Now that would be inside. That's the incense altar. And the table of gold, that's inside. That's the table of showbread, whereupon the showbread was. And the candlestick of the pure gold, that's inside. Five on the right side, five on the left. Now, how many did Moses have? He had just one. Solomon has ten. Before the oracle, on the other side of that most, on the, on the other side of the holy place, was the most holy place. The oracle with the flowers what flowers there is the altar the incense altar the Zacharias is burning incense at the time of prayer there's a table of gold that matches Moses where the showbread was laid there is the candlestick Nine more than what Moses had. All right. And if they had the seven lamps like Moses, it would have been 70 lamps. Knobs and flowers. Yeah, I mean, with the flowers. Now, that would probably go back to the design. But Moses had knobs and flowers and almonds, if you remember. And the lamp. So we are talking about. So the lamps of Solomon are not as ornamental as the ones of Moses. Because they are almonds. They were flowers. They were knobs. And you go back in Exodus and read about it. And the tongues of gold. That tend to lamps. And the bowls. And the snuffers. And the bases. This is all for the lamps. And the spoons. And the censers. Censers. Of pure gold. This is all the furniture, all the materials, all the vessels that go in the holy place. The censers of pure gold and the hinges. That's the first time that word shows up of gold. Now, I had a great discussion with somebody, a Christian, about this. Gold is very weak material. I'm told you can bite into gold and you can leave too far. That's what I'm told. And gold being as, as weak, you can pound it out into thread. Here are hinges of gold. Now, were they overlaid with gold or were they actually pure gold hinges? Hinges of gold both for the doors of the inner house, the most holy place, and for the doors of the house, to wit, of the temple. So... Now, instead of a veil, there are two doors that go into the oracle. There is a door that goes in the holy place. No more veil. So was ended all the work that King Solomon made for the house of the Lord. And Solomon brought in the things which David his father had dedicated, the silver, gold, everything. Even the silver and the gold and the vessels that he put among the treasures. Of the house of the Lord. And remember we talked about earlier. There were chambers. Some of those chambers would have been. This is where he put it. He probably had to visit. This is a gold chamber. This is a silver chamber. This would be a brass chamber. If they needed something. They would go in that room. They would prescribe. Take it out. And do what they needed to do. There would be chambers for food. We'll learn later. So it was remarkable. 